Hi everybody. So I just lost the best sunshine for the morning, but that's okay. I'm pressing on. Today I want to talk about fast healing versus slow healing. Which one are you? So you know the fast healer, the ones who are only sore for a day or half a day after um, doing a hard workout. Um, maybe they're not even sore and they, they tell you all about it. Uh, you know the person who's going to eat too much or eat a lot of uh, the foods we shouldn't typ typically eat and they feel okay the next day. It doesn't bother them. They're just not affected. Then there's the slow healer. You know, the person who coughs for weeks. They just have this unsettling cough and it just hangs on. It just lasts and lasts and lasts. Or somebody who feels under the weather for months and it just lingers. And uh, you have that cut that takes longer to heal, longer than you would expect. So these are the slow healers. Now, here's something interesting. Don't feel jealous of the fast healers because they lie. Yep, they're liars. Um, maybe they don't mean to be lying. They don't mean it. They don't really, under they don't really understand. Um, but yes, they do lie. And for one, here's, here's one good reason. The body amazingly tolerates a lot of abuse. Um, I can use myself for an example. Definitely. I thought I was the exception to the rule. I would tell people, don't do this and don't do that. And I still would. Yes, my confession. You've heard it before. I thought I was the exception to the rule. Uh, remember you in your 20s? Yeah. That fun decade of your life when you were out on your own and you just, you were unstoppable. Remember that time of your life? Also, let's um, talk about Dr. Joseph Kraft. He found out with years and years of testing that 90% of teenagers are already sick. They just don't know it. They are pre-diabetic. They are in a horrible state of blood sugar management, but they don't know it yet. So look up Dr. Joseph Kraft and spend his whole life studying this. And if you understand silent inflammation, there's another reason why um, people are fast healers. So uh, it's not silent, meaning um, it doesn't make any noise. Inflammation is not noisy, but it's asymptomatic. You don't feel it. Your body is not letting you know that there is trouble happening. Asymptomatic inflammation. Here's one example. Uh, for a heart attack, the first symptom in 50% of the cases is death. Now, I've been spouting off that statistic for quite a while, years. So I decided to look it up. I said, is, it, is that really the case? 50% of the time, the, sim the first symptom and only symptom is death? Well, yes. At WebMD, um, I looked it up. And sudden cardiac death is seen in one half of all heart disease deaths. That's uh, interesting. Uh, scary almost, because you think we're getting it under control. There's so many procedures there uh, out there. Uh, open heart surgery, angioplasty, stents, we're just, we do so much. We do so much with technology, but have we really have we really changed the, the statistics? It's kind of scary. For number two, bec uh, when you're wondering about those fast healers uh, who may be lying, not on purpose, but they are uh, not very accurate. Um, when you're in a state of fight or flight, there's no pain. In fact, you have decreased level of pain. So either one, you could be not in pain or you have a less severe uh, pain. Why is that? Why is that? And we shouldn't take that for granted. If you're in a state of shock after an accident, you don't have pain. Think back, think back 
to some instances in your life and you'll say, yeah, you know what? I felt like Superman. Uh, you're so busy during an emergency, a family emergency, whatever. You're so busy dealing with the matter at hand, you don't have pain. You don't recall being in pain. You just go, 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 go. That adrenaline. Um, that's when days later or weeks later, then you notice a delayed onset pain. Now that's a real thing. It's in the medical literature. It is, um, it's not in your head. You're not lying. You're not making it up because people would say, well, why now? Why now after all this time? Well, it's your brain protecting you. And it's, it's a real thing. And after a car accident, you know that. You're like, oh, I feel okay. And then we always say, you better go to the hospital anyway. Go get checked out. Get uh, medical care. Go to the emergency room. Do not just take it for granted that you're okay from a car accident. And because there, you, you do feel worse a short time later or maybe weeks later or months later. So don't give yourself a false sense of security. If you're in fight or flight often or daily, you may not have an accurate picture of your health. You may think all is a-okay, but if you're in that state of fight or flight, your sensation of pain is tamped down and you may be making things worse by going at the pace you're going and causing more injury in your body. Now, if you're a slow healer, uh, or uh, if you, your, your fight or flight is burned out, then it's more likely you're in that state of freeze or faint. And some people go back and forth. Fight or flight, freeze or faint. That's just how life is. And if you're a slow healer, you're going to feel like you don't have enough energy to kick up that healing process. You may be nutrient depleted, and you cannot get energized if you're depleted in nutrients. Or you're too depleted within your GI tract that you can't even absorb nutrients. Your mitochondria are wiped out. And your nutrition doesn't seem to work. And you are more fibrotic than resilient. And what I mean is you've got more scar tissue, more weakened tissue. You've got more of that than you have resiliency. So you just, you can't bounce back. You cannot recover as quickly as you remember. But we can flip that around. We can improve things. My third point today is I sometimes don't like to use the word heal or healing. Why is that? You know, I've always said, you are the healer. You've got that healing power within you. Your body has the ability to heal. We, and that's true. And the only healing you have is self-healing. There's no other kind of healing. And uh, so sometimes the words just seem, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, redundant. It's, it's, not, it's not the best word to use sometimes because healing actually means repairing, recovering. The body constantly monitors itself. So we're in a state of self-correction ongoing 24 hours a day. Uh, the body has to constantly respond to its environment. <clears throat> The body's always in self-defense. Every cell in your body has some type of self-defense mechanism so it can carry on. It deals with stress and it just continues to do what it needs to do. <clears throat> There's that feedback loop. There's that constant exchange of information so your body can maintain a high level of self-correction, health, vibrancy, so the body has to be replenished and the body has to be rebuilt. You're constantly in a state of rebuilding. Every day your body's breaking down and building back up. So you could call that healing. You could. 
your self defenses can become depleted over time. And I'm back. I answered a phone call. So healing has multiple steps. And if we say rebuilding, I think we can be better focused on that whole process. Um, there is a time factor involved. You don't just heal quickly or overnight. I'm sorry. There is time. And if you're going to have new tissue laid down or you're manufacturing new tissues, there's a healing process that takes time. And it does take a few days, depending on the extent of the injury. I and mean, if you have a cut, cut on your arm that's pretty deep or pretty long, it's going to take time for those new skin cells to take care of business. There is time involved. And you are majorly needed in the healing process. What do I mean? In order to replenish the body, the body's counting on you to give it high a high quality diet, high quality nutri nutrients, nutrition, routine chiropractic care, of course, and um, an excellent understanding of how you actually program your brain to respond to its environment. Intentionally or intentionally, you are always reteaching your brain how to handle stress. So this is moving the brain, feeding the brain, and talking to the brain. So this is all cool information that you can use to empower yourself. But it takes longer than your typical time on the adjusting table to learn this information. I can adjust you fairly quickly, but getting all this information, uh, putting it into good use, that takes longer. So get set up with a BrainSense telehealth session. What are they? Well, these are coaching sessions of self-discovery. Your routines are the most impactful in your health, in either direction. Your routines make the difference in the positive direction or the negative direction, but we're going to concentrate on the positive. So let me ask you some brain sense questions to help set the stage for you. How does your health care feel like unfinished business? Give some examples in, in your mind. Answer this for your own self. How does your health care feel like unfinished business? What health practices are working? What health practices don't seem to be working? What are you doing well? And what would you like to do better? And then um, describe and list for yourself uh, the stressful things that you have control over. What stress is in your control? What can you monitor? What can you change? And what stresses in your life are the ones you don't have control over. So this is going to get you thinking. And then, uh, would you like to address the stresses you aren't even aware of yet? Yeah, I'm sort of like the devil's advocate, but I'd like you to be prepared. Prepared, plan ahead, be ready, because there are stresses in your life you're not aware of, because it may not be affecting you right now. You may be in that fight or flight where you don't have pain right now, um, but that's not an accurate picture of your health. So let's talk about the other things stressing you that aren't really on your radar, but will impact your health over, over time. So. The BrainSense telehealth sessions are designed to be rewarding. I believe they're very meaningful because we need your full participation in the world. And you can't do that if you're half healthy because half healthy is still half sick. We want to fill in the cracks so you don't fall through the cracks. So thanks for listening today. Um, I want everybody to be an efficient healer, efficient at rebuilding your body efficient at moving your brain, feeding your brain, and talking to your brain. 
So look at the other uh, articles I've posted on the blog. If you want to look at the other BrainSense Telehealth infomercials, be my guest. Get in here, get on that adjusting table, get your chiropractic care because we need uh, your prefrontal cortex and all those wavelengths working efficiently. But call me up and get some sessions scheduled. And if you do it soon, your first 20 minutes are free. Thanks for watching.